Welcome back to Mountain Connections. Right now, it's an absolute honor to be speaking with award-winning author Brandi Colbert about her new book entitled Blackbirds in the Sky. This is an account of the Tulsa Race Massacre. Sheds light on the occurrences that happened during that time. Brandi, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me, Christine. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing more about this book, but before we do that, if you don't mind looking back at some of your previous works and what led you to writing this one. Absolutely. So, you know, I've written fiction for the majority of my career, but I have worked on a couple of adaptations of adult uh, books for younger readers. And the last one that I worked on was about Rosa Parks. And I just learned so much about history that I hadn't learned in school or even as an adult. And it got me really thinking about some of the things that, you know, we haven't really dug into in American history. And from there, I was just kind of convinced that I needed to write a history book next. And why do you think the Tulsa Race Massacre hasn't been taught in schools and many people had never heard of it until recently? Yeah, I mean, it's a few things. Part of it was a concerted effort on the part of, you know, state and city officials at the time. They wanted to erase that from history books completely, um, partially because Oklahoma was such a new state at the time. Um, it had only been a state for about 14 years, the time of the massacre. And so they didn't want to discourage people from moving in there. Um, I also think another part of it is the painful history. So some of the survivors and descendants of survivors uh, or excuse me, descendants of the victims didn't necessarily want to relive that and they were afraid of it, of history repeating itself also. So what were some of your goals as you approached writing this book? What did you want readers to come away with and how did you decide what to include and what not to put in there? Yeah, the part about not what in deciding what to include and what not to include is really difficult because there is so much history. And as I came across more and more, there was so much I wanted to get into the book. Um, so I had to sort of pare it down and say what leads up to this immediately in the time, sort of pare it down to like 1921 and before. Um, but my goal with the book also was just to write something that's interesting um, for younger people and people of all ages, but particularly teenagers, because I know I wasn't very interested in history at the time. Uh, when I was an, a teen, partially because of the way it was taught. And so I wanted to also write the book in a way that was, you know, a bit conversational. So it feels just like someone's telling you a story and you want to know how it ends, essentially. And of course, we don't want to spoil anything. We want everyone to read your book. But is there a certain moment, a chapter, an event that really struck you in a certain way? What is it and why is it so influential to you in writing this? Mm -hmm. Gosh, the whole book was just really such an experience of that, just a lot of things hitting home that, you know, I hadn't thought about before or making connections from the past to the present. Um, but the chapter that I really, you know, out of a book that was really pretty difficult to write, especially during a time that was particularly difficult in our country last year, um, I really enjoyed writing the chapter about how Greenwood, the Greenwood District in Tulsa came to be, um, otherwise known as Black Wall Street. And so that was really enlightening to me to see all the different types of businesses that were around in 1921 and um, the people who came to Oklahoma to build those businesses. Many of them were um, formerly enslaved or they were descendants of people who had been enslaved in the South. And so to me, that was just really a chapter full of joy. And that was sort of an oasis that I needed in a book that was full of a lot of hard truths that need to be told but weren't necessarily uh, very fun to write about at the time. And I'm sure it can be difficult to put these hard truths on the page, especially for a younger audience. How do you approach that? Do you try to remember when you were that age? Do you talk to other teens? What do you do to make sure that you're writing this in a way that is impactful, meaningful, but also appropriate for their maturity levels? Yeah, I try to remember um, what I felt at that age and, you know, how adults spoke to me or didn't speak to me in the way things were taught to me. Um, and so much of it, I think, is just remembering that teens are very smart and they have a lot of their own ideas about the world as well. And just trying to connect um, things that you're writing about to them in a way that doesn't speak down to them at all because they are quite smart and they will call you out on that immediately. Um, but, you know, also making sure that you're not getting too deep into some of the details that it won't hold their interest anymore. 
And you mentioned you've written both fiction and nonfiction books. Do you have any more in the works and are you going to continue doing nonfiction? Is there another moment in time that you're focusing on? Are you going to go back to fiction? Can you even tell me? Yes, um, luckily I do have a couple of projects I can talk about. So my next um, immediate projects are fiction. Um, the next one will be a YA novel about, um, it's tentatively called The Blackwoods, and it will be about a big black Hollywood family of three, three or four generations of them. So we'll have uh, multiple points of view and going back in time all the way to the 1940s through the present. Um, so that's next on my plate. Um, I do definitely hope to write more nonfiction. I studied journalism in school. It's always been a love of mine to read and now to write also. And after studying journalism in school, now you're this incredible award-winning, well-known author. Did you always want to write growing up? Was this the career that you dreamed of or did things shift and change as you realized this was a huge talent of yours? Oh, thank you. And no, you know, I've, I've always known that it's what I wanted to do. Um, since I was a little kid, there are pictures that my parents have of me just constantly with my nose in a book um, and also writing. I started writing when I was about seven years old um, at school and then started writing at home. And so it's always been a real passion of mine. I have things that say when I was a young girl, you know, that I wanted to be an author when I grew up. So this is a real dream of mine come true. And this book, Blackbirds in the Sky, I know you touched on what you hope readers will take away from it, but how important do you believe it is to look back at our past, to help us move forward, to connect with each other, and to move into a future that is hopefully a better place to be, especially with young people. So all that being said, as you think about this book in particular, you want readers to take away certain things to move into the future. Is that a true statement for you? Oh, absolutely. Yes, I think it's completely vital to know our history. Um, there are so many things that I wish I had known when I was younger that would have put a lot of things that I was experiencing at the time and also things I'm experiencing now into context and really helped me understand the world I'm living in. And so I think that's really important and I want to be part of helping a younger generation learn those types of things much earlier than I and a lot of my peers did too. And Brandy, where can we get Blackbirds in the Sky? Is it available now? And how can we make sure to pick it up? We all want to read it. Sure, thank you. It's available uh, wherever books are sold. So I always recommend um, your favorite independent bookstore if you have those in your town. Uh, but if not, you know, Barnes & Noble or you know, just any uh, other big bookstore around you will be carrying the book as well. Well, thank you so much, Brandy Colbert, for joining us today, author of Blackbirds in the Sky. Definitely looking forward to reading this book about the Tulsa Race and Massacre. Very much enjoyed learning more about Brandy and having her join us and spend time with us today on Mountain Connections. We'll be back with more right after this.